You want it that way? This way? All right. Hello, everybody. That seems weird. Shouldn't it be this way? Huh. Gonna make me go vertical. That seems weird. Anyway, it's uh, yeah, almost 11 o'clock at night. We're gonna do a live stream because I'm sitting here babysitting a dryer. I don't really need to be here watching the dryer, but we're here watching the dryer anyway. And uh, it's a good time to do a live stream because I have cell or internet service here. So, why is this not sideways? That's That's gonna drive me crazy. Is it weird to you guys that I'm vertical? And can you hear me okay? Those are the important things. Anybody still awake tonight? We got a few. What's up everybody? My Sparty's got a big win today. Hello from Illinois. Hammer down on corn, good for you. Hello, everybody. Loud and clear. That's good. You can hear me. I still think it's weird that we're upside down or we're sideways to me, but whatever. I film everything sideways with my phone landscaped and not vertical and no, it is what it is. So, all right. 36 hours and counting. Andrew, go to bed, man. Hello from Iowa. It's not sideways. What do you mean it's not sideways? Has to be. Watching on patrol. I think the red dog on the metering rolls calls the fire. Um, not really, but I don't know what, I don't know, I don't know what caused the fire. We still don't really know. Phil has a theory that it was the sun beating down on the side of the dryer at just the right angle, giving it a little extra heat. It's plausible, but I don't know. I don't know. Nearly two in Australia. Life of a farmer. Two, two. It's got to be two. A.M. No, it's got to be. Got to be two in the afternoon. Go dogs from Alabama. Ooh, you're in enemy territory there, aren't you? Oh, why doesn't this work? That's driving me crazy. Am I sideways to you guys now? not gonna let me watching in Minnesota would love an opportunity to get into harvest but I'm in a wheelchair not many are willing to work with that dilemma man that that makes it difficult it's not impossible there's a company out there that maybe you should look up called uh, agribility and they help people that um, you know to outfit tractors and stuff to make it more accessible get people in and out of them ah from Washington the Mariners lost yeah I it's baseball, I don't care. I'm a very, very, very casual Indians fan, but I, oh wait, they're not even called the Indians anymore. See, see, that's how much I care. Good evening from Athens, Georgia. Go dogs. are they winning? I haven't seen Georgia's score yet tonight or today. I, did, I don't even know who they played or when they played. Alabama lost, I know that. Yes, yes, sideways. Okay, so I'm sideways when I do that has to be vertical to stream. It's never had to be vertical to stream on my phone before. Every other live stream I have done has been sideways and it's always worked that way. Evening, Nathan, how's it going? Irrigated field today, yes! So if you've been following along on my short or my uh, Instagram stuff today, we started shelling the irrigated corn today and it's fantastic. It's, uh, it's a lot of fun. I just finished editing the video for tomorrow morning before I started this, that's why we're a little bit later. And um, I hope you guys enjoy it. It's going to be a good one because, yeah, we, we showed a lot, of, a lot of corn today. A lot of bushels today. So, all from Denmark. They're awesome. Thank you, Nathan. Uh, good evening from Napoleon, Ohio. Alabama did go down, I saw. So my sister uh, went to grad school at UT, Tennessee. And so we're... Uh, she is a big Vols fan. I am a casual Vols fan. I don't care that much, but sure, go Vols. 
Get it done. Dry that corn. Yeah, that's what we're doing. Drying corn. Any plans on putting LED lights on the overhead hopper? Yes, actually. In fact, I even bought the stuff to do it and haven't done it. Um, they're not easy to get to. There's no ladder on the inside of that bin, which makes it very difficult to actually um, attach them to the wall. So I was trying to figure out some other options with that, with mounting them. And uh, the other thing that I am considering is uh, there's... I found a company that makes some like uh, sonar bin level sensor kind of things that it, you just mount it in the top and it'll have a graph that'll show you. So I thought that might work as well. But yeah. <coughs> Evening from North Carolina. Hello from West Michigan. I nope. Uh uh. Fifty five to nothing. I think. Ah. Bummer. I was hoping Ohio State would be number one tomorrow, even though they didn't play this week. Uh, does it look like it might rain soon? We are getting more than our fair share. No. Where are you, Peter, that you're getting your rain? We had just a touch overnight. I don't even know if it registered. Um, we had a couple of tents. Today's Saturday, so it had to be in the middle of the week one day. I don't remember what day it was. Um, but no, it's dry. We could use a little bit of rain. I don't want it to turn super wet, but we could certainly use a little bit of rain to help our weed out. Uh, I really hope everyone can beat Oregon. Oh, they're playing Vanderbilt. Well, that's that's not even like a game. SEC, toughest conference in the world. We play eight games and half of them are against Vanderbilt. Uh-huh. Australia. Oh, it's wet in Australia. Yeah, well... Uh, interesting to see how you farm in the States. Not like we do it in Denmark. I can imagine that there are a lot that is quite a bit different. Awesome to hear about your super yields. Thank you. I was wondering why in your region people combine beans in 45 and not row by row because our region people do it row by row. I don't know what you mean. You mean like 45 foot head? Ours is 40 foot? Uh, I mean... Beans are so many different row widths around here. You can have beans in rows anywhere from seven and a half inch to 30 inch rows. I've seen 10s, I've seen 15s, I've seen 20, I've seen 22 and 30 and seven and a half. So, um, yeah, I, yeah, that, I guess that's why. Send the rain our way. Do you need to run the generator to unload the bins? Yes because the generator runs the legs and most of the bin unloads now. It didn't used to, but it does now. In fact, maybe all of them. Yeah, I think all of them. So yes, you do have to run the generator to unload the bins, except for the big bin when you're pulling out of the side draw. Been going on corn since Monday, had a field that yielded over 260 average. Nice, Tate, where are you from? I'm guessing Illinois. I've heard some really big yields coming out of places in Illinois, but that's normal for them. That is. That is not normal for us. The real question is, did you finish that corn? <laughs> finish it? No, we did not finish it. There's 270 acres up there. No way. Um, in fact, our, our wet bin is almost full, and we did 62 acres. And it was empty when we started at noonish. Can you guys see those lights there? The three green and the yellow, orange? Those are my indicator lights on our uh, wet bin that tell me how full it is. So there's a red light clear up top. That one never actually tripped, so it's not completely full, but we got a lot of wet corn around. Uh, came out of the field mostly at 20, 21 to 24, somewhere in there. So when are you gonna do your corn growers entry? Monday morning is the plan. Uh, I talked to the guy that I have to have come out to, to judge it or supervise it for me and um, yeah, he said Monday or Tuesday would work. So I'm hoping he's here Monday morning. Uh, we can run all day up there tomorrow and not finish it and, and just kind of get those places opened up. So, uh, Hello from Hudson. Hello. You'd have to start over to go to landscape mode. Well, why did it go into portrait mode? Was I holding my phone wrong when I hit go live? That must be why. My apologies. I don't. It's not. I don't like it. I don't like it at all. <sighs> oh, 
Oh, 45 degrees. Oh, you mean like on an angle? Why do we combine them on an angle? They're not definitely not a 45 degree angle. Maybe like a five degree angle. Um, it just kind of helps feed them in a little bit. Uh, I do that in some fields. I don't on others. Depends on how they were planted a lot of times. But um, uh, the guys in 30 inch rows will do that so that the, the, the beans aren't always in the exact two or three knives in section and it kind of uses the whole cutter bar. In our 15 inch rows, that's not as big of a concern. Um, but it does help them feed in a little bit better and just kind of move stuff across the head a little bit. So you should have a better score on your farm focus because I did take advantage of the discount today. Excellent. Thank you, Brad. If anybody else would like any Border View Farms merchandise, I'm going to put it out there right now. You got an hour. Well, I don't know if that ends at midnight uh, Eastern or Central Time. I have no idea how that works because farm focus is Central Time Zone out there in the West. But uh, yeah, till tonight is the deadline. Use uh, code HARVEST22 to get yourself 22% off uh, any Borderview Farms merchandise or any of your other farm-focused brands. So go check it out. Get that. You can. I, I give you permission to leave the um, live stream to go do that, but come back. I uh, really like seeing the big yields you all are getting this harvest. Me too, Bill. I really like that too. It's a lot of fun. Uh, this is not normal. We do not normally have the kind of yields that we are seeing this year. I have never harvested 80 bushel beans before this year, uh, and and we'll see where the corn shakes out yet. Our corn's been good. It hasn't been great. Uh, the stuff we did today was was great, but um, for the most part, the rest of it, not so good. Or I shouldn't say it's not so good, just not as impressive as 80 bushel beans. You're in Iowa, okay. Iowa also has really good corn sometimes, so. If you ever get to Denmark by any chance, we have a lot of agriculture to see. Yes, I know you do. I have I have seen of it, I guess, but I've never been there. When is the X9 coming? We're on an eight row corn head, man. I do not need an X9 combine. I can use it in beans. I could I could put an X9 to use with a 50 foot draper in beans, but uh, I am not going to be buying one for running corn. I can assure you of that. So, because. I mean, we're waiting on a dryer now, and we, uh, let's see, we did 62 acres today, twice in the middle of it, and then at the end we had to shut down because our trucks were all full and we had to stop and unload them and then go back up and start some more with an 8-row corn head. What good does a 12-row do? What good does an X9 with a 16-row that does twice as much output as what I can do now do? I, yeah, nothing. doesn't help me at all. Give them a thumbs up. Thank you. Yes, please do hit that uh, like button, please. And if you're not subscribed, you should subscribe. Hello from Syracuse. Yeah, Syracuse is doing well this year. All the basketball schools, right? That's what they say. Uh, have you ever thought about adding more grain storage? Um, well, we did a lot of grain system upgrades kind of right before I started making these videos when we uh, upgraded our dryer and we put up that big bin that we've got out here. So we don't really have a need for more grain storage right now. Um, yeah, we can't store everything that we produce, but we need to move some grain in the fall anyway for cash flow purposes because we pay a lot of bills in the fall. And so, um, yeah, we, we don't have any plans or ideas of future grain storage expansion at the moment. Uh, we have provisions in place for that if we ever wanted to, but no need at the moment. Uh, you're seeing good response to fungicide this year. Beans, yes. I think we were seeing close to 7 to 10 bushel on beans, a couple of side-by-sides that I looked at. And on corn, um, the one field was about 10 bushel advantage. The other that I've seen was like 20. So, yes, there is definitely a response to the fungicides this year. A lot of that stuff I'll go through after harvest, sit down at the computer and really dig into it and look at it a little bit closer. You kind of... You're curious during harvest, so you pull it up real quick and do a quick, real preliminary glance over that stuff, and um, um, you know you get a, a basic idea. But I don't really dig into it that much until later. So, how easy is it to switch a 780 combine from beans to corn? Well, it's easier than the millennial farmer would make you think. Uh, I didn't really watch that video yet, but I did see where he had a handle in the wrong spot and wasn't working right. So it literally takes me a minute and a half. That's it. Um, there is there is three things to change on the straw chopper, and uh, then you have to switch the gearbox on the rotor from 
high to low speed or low to high speed. That's it. I don't change. I don't change the speed of the feed accelerator. That's on slow speed all the time. I do not change the feeder house drum height. That's up all the time. None of that stuff has to get changed. Um, you have to change the rotor speed gear. You have to change the chopper speed. You have to pull the knife bank out and you have to, there's a deflector panel that you have to change. That's all there is. Uh, have you ever filled all your storage beds? Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, and I'm pretty confident we will have them full at the end of this year as well. Um, we've got one 13,000 bushel bin out here that was kind of a debate. Do we put corn or beans in it? We could have filled it with beans, but decided to sell them, and the price of beans is really good, and we need to cash flow, like I was saying. So uh, it will end up with corn in it. I mean, the field that we are selling right now, we're going to get over 40,000 bushels off of this one field. So we're filling the big bin right now, but it's... <laughs> I mean, that holds 120. We're going to have a third of that bin full off of this one field. So, yeah. Uh, pretty cool. God bless your family. Thank you. How is Brayson doing? Did anyone else get sick? Nope, nobody else got sick. He's fine. It seemed to be a one-day thing. He was, he threw up twice. He was fine. Even later that day with me, he seemed fine. He played in a soccer game this morning, went to school yesterday. He's, he's good. Notice how I didn't properly put the logo out. They don't sponsor me. Huh, in Denmark, we had record years. Five tons barley per acre. Five tons. Five, ton, five tons of barley. What's, the, what's a bushel of barley? What's it weigh? I don't know. That sounds pretty good. Five tons would be 10,000 pounds. And that's American tons. I don't know. Why are beans so high? The price or the yield? Uh, with your 780, why do you run an 8-row and not a 12? <laughs> right, because we can't keep the corn away from an 8-row. Uh, I run a 780 so I can push a 40-foot draper and go fast in beans. Uh, we run an 8-row corn on our 780 because we can't keep the corn away from it. We had to shut the combine down three times today to unload trucks because we can't move them fast enough. We're also sitting here with a full wet bin waiting on our dryer. It is not a small dryer. It is a big, fast, efficient dryer. But uh, we just we can't. We can't move that way that fast. Uh, so a 12 row, the advantage to it would be we put less hours on our machine because we shut it down more often than empty trucks. Uh, is that worth it? I don't know. 12 row corn heads are expensive. If you don't buy a folding one, you got to take it off to move between fields all the time, every time, no matter what. And uh, that's a real pain in the butt. Buy a folding one, sure. But it's probably 50 to 60 grand more than our eight, eight row. Is it worth it? Not for us, not right now anyway. We may get there someday, but we're not there yet. Uh, price of beans. Why are the price of beans so high? Well, supply and demand. I know uh, uh, South America had relatively poor production, I think, over the last year. So that has helped. Demand is high. And um, there was not the carryover that, that we thought there was, more or less. So, And they keep dropping the yields a little bit. I saw the October report, the USDA uh, dropped the yield estimate on beans a little bit, so um, that's that plays into it as well. You should definitely have more sponsors. They're missing out. Thanks. Tell them that. This whole YouTube marketing thing, it works. Like, I bought Stalk Stompers because of the people on YouTube that had them, so yeah, they should sponsor me. It works. Barley is 48 pounds per bushel, so 10,000 divided by 48. Somebody do the math on that. That'd be 200. A little... A little over 200 that sounds that sounds high 200 bushel barley that sounds high but i don't really know what barley is supposed to yield we've never raised barley that's really sounds really good uh on your shorts video you put up on the irrigated field it shows red on your lanes isn't that going to hurt your numbers i would have thought you would lift up on those just wondering well it's the center lane um i don't lift up for the center lane but i don't actually combine down the lanes that are parallel to the rows we skip over from them so they're not red um, but the center lane does turn red because it, you, you can't lift up and put the head down fast enough to turn the recording on and off. So that all gets factored into it. That's factored into the yield numbers that are sitting there that are really good, even though there was no corn there. Um, yeah, so it just shows you how good the rest of that stuff is. Uh, seen you planted a lot of beans this year. What's your ratio of corn to beans? Actually, uh, we were almost dead even. Um, let me pull up my spreadsheet. That's not the one I want. Hey, right, you're... 
you're sitting on my laptop here, so <laughs> I can pull up my spreadsheet right behind you. And uh, I can tell you exactly how much difference there was in our crop split for the year. Uh, maybe. 22 Borderview Farms. Too far. 22 Borderview Farms right there. Now we get it open. So. Total. Total. Uh, 20. 20.2 acres difference between corn and bean acres this year. Almost identical. And that's kind of the plan for next year as well. We should be pretty close to that. Uh, don't know what five metric tons is in bushels. Yeah, five, uh, five, a metric ton would be like 2,200 pounds, 22 something. So you're, uh, if you got five, that's a little over 11,000 pounds divided by 48. So you're well over 200 bushel an acre. That sounds really, really good. Uh, do you think a wind system would be beneficial on your bean head? What is the cost of it? Um, yeah, so I've thought about that. And I think there are certain circumstances and instances where a, be a wind system would be very beneficial, particular in short, dry beans. I've not had very many short beans this year. All of our beans have been really tall, and those ones that were 80 bushel that we combined earlier this week that were all tangled up in just a thick mat of everything and you couldn't see the rows or anything, I kind of think an air bar would have matted that down and made it very difficult to combine, much worse than what it actually was. I don't know that. That's speculation on my part because um, I've never run one, but I don't know if it would be worth it. Uh, like I said, in certain instances, yes. But if your beans are good and you're doing it right, which you can't always, you're going to have bad spots. But I don't know that the air bar is really going to help hardly at all. Uh, and I think it's more of a hindrance and a power hog than anything. And that's one of my biggest things that would be a negative to me is I use every bit of power that our combines got when we were combining beans, especially if there are any green stems in them or anything. Like we don't have enough power as it is put an air bar on there that sucks power away from the, the threshing in the combine and we have to drive slower and I'm not going to be very happy. So it had better get more yield in beans to pay for it uh, and to make it worth having to drive slower. Any chance of Brock learning to drive a truck? Uh, I suppose there's a chance. Um, he's He's been doing a little bit I guess here um, but with the automatic truck more than the, the sh manual shifting trucks because he needs some practice let's just say so how wide is your combine when roading with no head um 18 feet probably i'd have to take tape measure out but we're under 20 uh just hit 200 subscribers i'm trying good luck fred hello from louisiana you remember hitting 200 subs? I don't remember. That was a long, long time ago. It was uh, well before I was making these kinds of videos because I, I had some uh, my, my Big Bud videos that went viral and people subscribed. I don't know. It turns out you guys really like Big, big Bud videos. I ha happen to have one. Uh, in Vermont... Larson's is experimenting with black beans. Seems like a lot of trouble is the market growing for them. I, I've seen that they're doing some of that stuff. I um, I don't know anything about black beans or no, there's no market right here. They do grow a lot of uh, dry beans, edible beans up in the Thumb of Michigan. So um, there's, there's that up there, but I have not heard of anything locally. Do you foresee any ground purchases in the near future? Any additional rental ground for 23? Rental ground, it uh, doesn't look like it. You never know. We don't really turn stuff down if it's reasonable, but nobody's came to us with anything, and it's getting to that point in the year where you either have it or you don't at this point. So um, purchases, uh, land is really expensive right now. So I tried to buy a farm a week, week and a half ago and uh, didn't get it. It went for more than I was willing to pay for it. So I won't say no uh, if something came up, 
but right now it just kind of looks like the market is uh, higher than I am comfortable with. So, <clears throat> is your bean head rigid or hinged? Uh, rigid. It's a RD forty F. They did not have the hinge drapers out when we bought it. Uh, missed a few videos. The competition with your buddies Cornel. Did you win with the irrigated corn outlook so far? Uh, well, we're shelling that stuff right now, right? So I have not done my corn growers entries yet, and um, uh, it is it is really good corn, but they have not run theirs either, and they're actually just getting rolling with beans uh, after chopping a bunch of corn for silage and stuff. So got a ways to go up there. Hi, how you doing today? Mm, we're doing pretty good. We're drying corn. Uh, you guys looking for a specific truck for fill or just a good deal, new or used? Yeah, um, it's not that we're looking for something. We're not looking for a specific truck, kind of. We kind of are. Uh, we're just being pretty picky because we can be. So uh, we're heavily, heavily leaning towards the Volvos and Max. Something with a iShift M drive transmission. It's got to be a 13 liter engine or bigger. Uh, you know, something we can turn up to 500 horsepower. Um, day cab. It's got to have. Um, it's got to have a vertical exhaust. Some of them, a lot of them, are horizontal underneath now, and that will not work for what we're doing, pulling into fields and stuff. So we can't have that. Um, what else is on that list of requirements? I don't know. It'd be nice to have all aluminum rims. It would be nice to have full lockers. Those things are hard to find. Um, yeah, kind of quit looking here once we got into harvest because we're too busy to go look for trucks anyway. So, and we're we want something that's you know less than 400,000 miles, 16, 17 or newer. A decent, nice truck is what we're looking for, and they're few and far between. So. Uh, not to rub it in with your row of shame, but doesn't GPS pick each row based on header width, or does it just make the combine go straight? Oh no, it's supposed to pick. Yeah, I used it. It was off a row, and I don't. It was probably my fault when I planted. I, I shifted some stuff and got it off just enough, but it was picked the wrong row. But uh, yeah, I, it it should work. It should twenty thousand dollars in RTK guidance on there, and I can't freaking not have rows of shame. It's sad, right? How about a video with your dad describing how he started? Andrew, go watch video number 500 that we recorded. Was that just a year ago? Yeah, it was last year. Uh, dad and I did a little farm history thing there, so uh, you'll see some of that stuff there. But, yeah, that's those are good things to do. So we'll have to do it again sometime. Yield on the irrigated corn? It's good. It's really good. Uh, should I tell you or should I leave you in suspense until tomorrow and you have to go watch it? So... Um, we're meeting our goals at the moment. Have you looked into Titan tires for the combine? No. I have not looked into Titan tires for the combine. I'm not replacing the tires on the combine. There's nothing wrong with them. They're brand new. Uh, why not a Peter Ken? Yeah, um, Peter Bill Kenworth would be brands three and four, I guess, so the second choice. I really want to stay away from Freightliners, Internationals, yeah. Um, the, the Kens and the Pete's are, they seem to catch a premium and, um, yeah, I don't know. I just, I've heard very, very good things about the Volvo, uh, I, I shift transmissions and they're nice trucks. So really enjoy watching. You have a great work ethic. Thank you. Appreciate that. We, um, we get a lot done. Today is, oh, it's today. Today's Saturday. Today is day 21 in a row. 21 of videos. It's the last day I took off was Sunday of fair week when I took the boys up to the fair. And, uh, yeah, that would have been three weeks ago tomorrow. So, and we're not stopping anytime soon. We might make a video every day the whole month of October. Uh, to tell. <laughs> Tell us, please. <laughs> uh, we're in the 260 range, average for the field, so I'm I'm pretty happy with that. 
Uh, how's come Phil is never in your video? I, it's his choice. He doesn't want to be in the videos. We've never really addressed it and stuff, but he's more of a private, doesn't, I'm not going to put his stuff out there if he doesn't want to be in it. He doesn't have to be in it. Appreciate your dedication to the videos. Thank you. I, I still enjoy making them. When I quit enjoy making them, you guys will be the first to know because you won't see me. Uh, have you all ever considered selling the farm in Berkey in order to buy more land near the home farm? Not really. Um, for one, we don't own all that ground. We rent some of it, so we couldn't sell it. We would just give it up. And uh, it is nice having that different area to farm in because it, it breaks up our weather risk. We can catch rain here that we don't get there like we did this year, or we can catch rain there that we don't get here like we did last year. And so it, uh, it really makes it um, a good diversification from a risk standpoint. That ground down there is different. It's very productive. It's, it's better than most of what we farm here almost every year. And so um, I don't want to give it up. Plus, it's my grandpa's. It's my home. My, my, it's our family's homestead place, like where they started from. We've been farming some of those farms for at least 80 years, uh, if not longer than that. And um, I don't want to give it up. I, I have no desire to. So it's nice. We've got a grain system there. We've got enough acres to make it worth the trip and the home base and everything. It's not like we're just going down there for 100 acres or one field or something. So um, short answer, no. Not going to do that. Uh, is all the wheat drilled? Yes, we finished planting wheat a week ago. Whenever it was, we finished up combine and beans down to Berkey. We finished the wheat down there. I think it was last Friday. Now that Brock drove the combine, he can't complain about cleaning it this year since he helped dirty it. You're exactly right. Brock made it dirty. Brock's got to clean it. I, I like that plant, that stand, that uh, line of thinking. Yep, I agree. Uh, would you ever consider buying Case IH or any other brand equipment, or are you guys diehard green guys? Um, we're pretty green. I will say that. I wouldn't rule it out. I wish we had better dealer support for any other brand, but um, I have found them to be almost impossible to work with. And uh, our dear dealer, to their credit, does a really, really good job. And uh, they treat me like an actual customer, which we are. But when I walk into another branded dealer and they barely acknowledge my presence or just don't seem to care that I am there, it makes it really hard to do business with them. And that's been my experience with a couple of other brands. So, uh, which is really unfortunate. I don't like that. But now that said, uh, Deer is getting awfully awfully aggressive with their pricing and um stuff is really really expensive it's getting very difficult to try and buy equipment so we'll see we will see it shouldn't take a half a million dollars to buy everything and right now it seems like you know even corn planters are half a million dollars that's outrageous just outrageous uh get you a volvo you won't regret it yeah that's what i hear just remember that you taking a boy for a ride a couple of videos back. That was a great thing to do. You know, that boy is going to be a farmer, right? Yeah, he enjoyed that. That was fun. I had given that kid a ride a year ago, I think, and uh, uh, his grandma told me that whoever was planting that field, which would have been Phil, um, gave him a ride planting this spring. So that's good. <sighs> Suppose we should go see if our dryer's on fire. We'll walk around it at least. That's what the whole point of why we're here. We're watching the dryer. No smoke on this side, so that's good. Everything's running. You can see the control panel here. We're at 203, 201 degrees. That means the burner's on. That means the whole thing's on. That means the burner's on too. Unload system is on. The fans are on. The dry leg is on. All good there. We'll go walk around it and make sure that the other side's not on fire. We're a little nervous, if you can't tell, since the dryer started on fire on us. It was right up there in that corner. We still got the ladder set up so we can climb up there and check it. It is not on fire. All is good. You want to see a big fire? Yeah, the, the actual burner that's supposed to be on fire? Here, let me flip the phone around the camera. wet. 
Uh, anyway, there's the big fire. So that's the fans are down underneath and they're blowing the hot air up through that center all the way up through there and then it goes through the vents on the sides. Yeah, big fire. It goes through the vents on the sides and then comes out through here. Hot air. All right. You can see our green lights and the yellow light. That's how full our uh, bin is. In fact, that, that yellow thing up there, that uh, indicator is tripped. So we almost got our red light on. Didn't quite make it, but the wet bin's about full. So we got to keep it moving. Drying corn. That's why it's 11.30 and we're still here, because we got wet corn, we gotta get it dry. to dry, or we're not gonna be able to do much tomorrow. So, tomorrow is Sunday, I'm gonna go to church in the morning, so Phil's gonna start to dry her up here at seven o'clock or something like that. It'll have a few hours to run before we can get started and should get it brought down some, but we're only running about 650 bushel an hour through it right now. This corn's drying a little slow. Um, is what it is. So that'll that'll uh, probably be our problem tomorrow. Is we'll get full of wet corn and won't be able to won't be able to do anything. Anyway, where are we at here? I would definitely stay away from the Western Star trucks. If you even decide to tune or delete it, is absolute nightmare. Go with Peter Kenworth for the service. Okay. Really enjoy your videos. Level of instruction, and education that shows the chemistry is awesome. Thank you. How's the yard grass? Uh, well, thanks, Andrew, and uh, the yard is, well, it's kind of there. It's coming, but it's pretty thin. That rain that we got right afterwards just killed us, so it is what it is. Screen may be locked. Run your finger down the right side of your phone. Look on the left side of the screen see it's locked. Surrounded by arrow is highlighted. No, it doesn't matter because when I, when I turn it, it just tells me, rotate device, and I have to put it back. It won't change the video. Sorry. Sorry for the vertical. I... I guess my mistake, I should have had it horizontal before I started the live, but too late now. Uh, good evening from Utah. Total acres of wheat, uh, just under 500. I don't know, what did we end up with? I can tell you that too. 23 Borderview Farms. Oops. Next year stuff. Wheat acres. Total. 491. I think it would be awesome if your dad carried a cam for a day here and there. I It would be. It would be. I should give Brock a camera more often. Maybe tomorrow I'll give him a camera. His problem is I film too much as it is, and then I get long videos, and when Brock films, it's even longer. Any of the wheat coming out of the ground? Oh, yeah. Most of the wheat is up. Uh, the stuff down to Berkey, I haven't been by there and it, it may not be yet. We really need some rain to help that, but uh, all... Uh, all of it but the last field of wheat around here is uh, out of the ground and looks really good. So get the next 15 Cummins in the new truck, no matter what brand. Yeah, um, I mean, I, I don't I don't think the Volvo engines are bad or the Mack engines, um, but the Cummins is an option. Uh, dryer is LP. We don't have natural gas here. I take it your dad loves doing the tillage. Seems he's always yeah. He enjoys that. It's uh, he he does a good job with it. Um, I mean he would run the combine too, but he knows that I like doing that, and he doesn't care. So yeah, he does a lot of the, the tillage work. Uh, what about price? Price on a truck? Is that what you're asking me? What price of what? Call from Florida. You need to go teach Cole how to set and run a green machine. I heard he was running a 790. I take it his doesn't have the cameras on it either. <laughs> how much gas do you use per 650 bushels? I couldn't tell you. I figured this out one time, how many bushels we dried and stuff, and I, I don't remember the numbers. It's been a while. So, How's the corn running? Corn is running really good really good we're working on our irrigated corn it's um it's good it's very good i'm caught up guys what else you want to know
Ooh, we were waiting for a better price to sell our corn in Brazil. Oh, price of corn. Well, let's look that up too. Uh, cash bids, local. So our local ethanol plant that we can go to, paying cash right now six forty six fifty four. 35 cents under October, 35 cents under the December contracts. Uh, by October 21st, they're at 684, so there's 30 cents there if we can get it up to them in the next six days. Not worth it. March 23 is at 696, so you can get almost seven bucks there. That's pretty good. Uh, let's look at beans. Price of beans today is at thirteen fifty eight. That's a good price. That's a pretty dang good price. <clears throat> all right. Is Brayson better? Yep, he's all better. Went to school yesterday. Played soccer this morning. He was in the combine with me this afternoon for a little while. He seems to be just fine. Uh, what's the weather forecast for you guys? Hopefully, long range not going get, going too wet for you. Um. There was a chance of rain on Monday and some snow on Tuesday, and then it's supposed to clear off again and be in the 40s and 50s and be nice. So weather really has been great for harvest. I uh, wouldn't mind a rain day. I got a lot of stuff to do, catch up on that we're waiting for a rain day, and uh, we aren't getting it. So Plus the wheat could use some rain. But I do not want it to turn muddy. That would be that would be bad if it's... That uh, wouldn't be bad or the worst thing, but... Um, it is really nice having dry ground conditions, so I, I uh, very much appreciate that. But we would take a little rain. How many hours have you put in today? Well, I mean, I started at 8 this morning, so it's almost midnight. Or it's 11.30. I don't know. Figure that out. 8, 12, 16. That's normal. If you wait till next summer, it'll be worth gold. The corn, you think? Maybe. Maybe. It's not all sold. We're going to fill the bins, so we'll have some, but I don't know. Thanks for buying the grass seed. I combined 500 acres of it, and they paid me $1.10 per pound. I'm guessing you probably paid $2 or better. Uh, something like that. Yeah, I don't remember what I paid for grass seed. It was well, well more than $2 a pound. I think it was closer to $4 a pound. How much did I buy? No, I bought... Two bags, yeah. Two bags was 425 bucks, I think. 425 a pound. That sounds about right. Maybe you should send me that stuff for a dollar ten. Uh, just lost a 670 to a fire and got the new 780. It actually had the cameras. That's such a bullshit. Is it a new 7? Oh, that ticks me off. I'm getting quite salty about not having these cameras. They're going to start paying me some money back, I think, because I paid for them a year ago. And I'm going to run two years without them. That's not, that is BS is what that is. Any plans on working on the old farm while we're restoring this winter? Uh, yeah, there's plans on it. I just don't know when. I, I have so much stuff going on. That's at the bottom of the list. I really need to do some more work in my garage. I got one wall nice and done with the electrical and the insulation and the drywall up. I have two walls that need to be done yet. So um, winter is coming and I would really like to have my garage insulated so I don't burn so much propane this winter. But yeah, I would like to work on that tractor. Watch your videos every day, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I choose one horse sized duck. How's the lawn looking? Not great. It's there, it's coming, but it's not great. We'll see what it make we'll see what it uh, does in the spring. How'd you make out selling sweet corn? I did okay. I, I did okay. Um, I basically got enough money to pay for the seed that I bought, but I still have half of the seed, so yeah. I did alright. Buckeyes were idle day. I'm confused on the Spartan year. Well, you shouldn't be confused because, yeah, so Ohio State did not play today, so I wore my Michigan State shirt because I did go to school at Michigan State. I am a Spartan fan. I'm a Spartan. 
I just am a bigger Ohio State fan because that's what I grew up. My dad went to Ohio State. I grew up a Buckeye, and then I went to school at Michigan State. So I cheer for both of them. And uh, today we were Spartan fans because Ohio State was not playing. So usually you guys don't see it, but usually I have my Michigan State T-shirt on and my Ohio State hoodie unless they play each other. Actually, I did that when they played each other last week too, see? Michigan State farming. There you go. And my sister's up there now. She was at the game today, I think. Uh, dumb question for you, but do you remember going to school with me? Yeah, I do, Andrew. I remember you. Uh, how much more corn do you have to harvest? A lot. We're really just getting rolling with the corn harvest. We've got 1,100 acres to go yet or more, somewhere in that ballpark. So we're almost done with beans. We're down to 200 acres on beans. I need a day and a half probably, um, but they're just not mature. They're not ready. So we're going to wait on those till the end of the week probably, a week from now. Uh, you really are getting salty. I am. I'm telling you, I am. It's ridiculous. How can they not? How can they charge me for something and not provide it for two years? That's outrageous. What are your soybeans used for after you sell them? Well, after we sell them, they do whatever they want with them. I have no control over that. Um, speculation here, but I would guess that vast majority of them go to make soybean meal for livestock feed. Um, and then uh, some of them could get crushed for oil, but uh, soybean meal is going to be the vast majority of our soybeans. And corn is mostly livestock feed too. We do sell some directly to an ethanol plant, so it's getting used in ethanol. Um, but uh, the one elevator we sell to, at least they used to, I don't know if they still do as much, but they used to load rail cars and send them to the uh, southeast Carolinas, Georgia, and uh, went to the chicken farms and stuff down there. So that's where most of our grain's going to. Uh, you bring a hopper bottom to southwest Missouri and I'll sell you all you want June 20th. <laughs> I, I'm, not, I'm not doing that. But yeah, I need like 100 pounds. <laughs> uh, we're planting soybeans, but rain don't stop. Well, at least you'll have enough moisture to get them out of the ground, right? It has been two years with the cameras, holy heck. Well, I mean, technically a year, but we used them last fall and we're doing it again this fall. So it's two harvest seasons that I have not had them. That just seems outrageous. Both of our new 780s had all the cameras. Yeah. I'm going to have to call my dealer again because I called them right as we were starting harvest and I heard some other people were getting their cameras and the new combines were coming with them. And they said, nope, there's none available. Can't get them. It's time to, time to start holding their feet to the fire a little bit more, I think. But thanks for letting me know that. Now I'm even more salty about it. Uh, thanks for the videos. I'm disabled. I wanted to buy a farm. Cannot. So watching your videos is a way for me to farm for you. Well, thank you. You should go back and watch some of uh, Harmless Farmer's uh, videos. Andy, he, uh, he was quite an inspiration. Uh... Does your dad ever sell any of his lumber or is it for his personal projects? He hasn't really sold any of it. Um, occasionally cuts up some logs, custom does it for other people and stuff, but no, he hasn't. We haven't gotten into the selling lumber stuff yet. He's been using it all or stockpiling it, so I, I don't know how, how big of a market there is or, you know, what to do with it. So did you get your beans done? No, nope, we're sitting at about 200 acres of beans to go. Don't have a lot, but we got a few to do. Just um, too wet. We uh, we would have been running them today had they been dry, but those beans we ran yesterday, uh, three loads we hauled in today were all wet between 16 and 19 percent moisture, and that's that's too wet. So, oh well. That blows my mind that your dealer hasn't hooked them up up them cameras yet. Yeah, um, uh huh. They did try to sell me a new combine. <laughs> he literally called me like, I'm going to give you a price on a new combine. Like, you haven't even given me my old combine yet. All of it. Oh, I was <laughs> outrageous. And charged me another 100000 to boot. Got done with beans today. Good job. Congrats. That's awesome. 
All right, we're live again. Uh, let's do a dryer check from in here. I'll show you what I'm kind of watching inside here. And yeah, I mean, you guys have seen this in my videos, but this is our dryer master control panel. It controls the speed of the dryer and uh, makes sure that the outlet is very close to our set point, which it is. Uh, we are filling our big bin and it's towards the bottom right now, so we want that corn to be fairly dry in there. That's why we've got it set down to 14 and a half, because uh, it's going to be there probably until August or September. And we don't want it to spoil or mold or anything like that. Um, so it's putting it out at 14.7 right now. Our inlet is at 22.5, and this is the rate per hour, 635 bushels an hour. So temperature or 204 degree plenum temperature all of that stuff is here with a nice fancy chart the green line is inlet moisture the blue line is output moisture the black line is target so you can see we're running a little high there for a while today and now it's pulling it back down to uh, where it's supposed to be and this is uh, throughput the rate we were up there at 650 and just kind of keeping it where it needs to be so that works pretty good. Uh, we should do a dryer calibration. Let's see. Let's go to this one and dryer cal, 8:22 p.m. All right. So we have this outlet moisture sensor. It is on the bottom here. I will show you how this works. We grab our buckets and we need to calibrate it. So that moisture sensor is located in the discharge tube from the dryer, it's right here. It's right inside there. What we're gonna do is push this button and it starts blinking. Then we hold this door open and uh, it pulls a sample out of that moisture sensor so that we can uh, go in and test it. It's taking an average over 30 seconds, so we wait for the light to stop blinking and uh, it averages over 30 seconds and we go test the sample and compare it to what the uh, computer thinks that it was. So, waiting for the light to stop blinking. There. All right. So there's our sample of corn. Now that light stays on until we input it. So we tell it what the moisture was. <coughs> All right. So what time is it? 11:43. We're gonna dump our corn in here. Dryer cow. Call it 11:45. And we test it. Now we come over here to our dryer panel and we hit the calibrate button. Outlet says a sample waiting, enter. So it thinks it's 14.8. So we're going to come down here into our spreadsheet and we keep track of all this. So it is 10, 15, 22, oops, at 11, 45 p.m. Okay. Uh, 14.8 and we got a ooh 13.9 we run this through three times and we average them well that'll speed it up a little bit if it's point drier than it's come on there we go alright where are we at in the comments any regrets on selling the 8400 yet it was an 8300 and no not really uh we i mean we would have used it sparingly we would have used it on a little scraper or something but no not, not nothing not really someday maybe i'll buy it back uh, i think it's that the dealer that is slow on coming through on the cameras the athens one is worthless in my opinion they never followed through on things for me i've been really happy with them overall uh this issue here 14.1. So we got a 13.9 and a 14.1 or 14.0. For the most part, I'm really happy with our John Deere dealer, but this camera issue, it is an issue. I'll call him on Monday. Complain. Uh, about 1,900 acres of corn left. That, that'll take a minute. How much will losing the farm in Berkey hurt your operation? Well, we aren't going to lose the farm in Berkey. We own at least part of it. Um, I mean, would it hurt? I guess. It wouldn't, it wouldn't be great, but it wouldn't hurt that much. We'll be fine. 
we've got enough to do. 14.1, so 14.0 is our average. So we come over here and we type in 14.0 and hit enter and it will make an adjustment. And we type that in, 14.0. Okay. And we'll go back to our dryer master page. So, yeah. Maybe it'll speed it up a little bit based on that. Flip you guys back around. All right. How late am I going to stay here doing this? You guys um, keeping me awake, so I'm not sleepy. Usually I'm falling asleep by this point after editing a video, but... Uh, will you be finishing your basement, spare room, or man cave? Uh, the plan is to finish it eventually. I don't know when that's going to happen. Um, but yes, I would like to finish it. At least part of it. We'll use part of it for storage, unfinished storage, and part of it... We've got provisions in there for finishing it uh, for a bathroom and such. So, we'll see. Andy's wife and daughter said they're going to keep his channel going. Yes, I watched that video uh, yesterday, actually. So, spent many decades running 90 car corn trains to three different chicken feed mills. 9,900 tons per train. We figured that was about 1,500 to 1,600 acres per train. That's... That's a lot of acres on a train. Huh, cool. Rental land. In your area, is cash lease better than a split profit based on yield, or what do you prefer? So everything we do is straight cash rent. Um, I, I know that crop share stuff is common in other areas. I don't know of much of any of that around here. Uh, there may be some of it, um, but it's just most people just want their cash. And we there's really not any flex lease stuff around here either because... One thing that we have found, right? We have really good relationship with most all of our landlords, with all of our landlords. And um, we try and treat them very fairly. Um, we don't necessarily always pay the highest rent, but we don't ever go down, right? People, people don't like taking less money. And so uh, if you're gonna raise the rent for somebody, which we do, and we are occasionally, um, that's fine, that's good, but don't try and bring it back down next year. They don't wanna take less. And so we kinda of, we, we kind of do it in smaller increments over time rather than making a big jump, you know, when prices are really good or yields are really good like this year, we're gonna raise things. But if we have a disaster next year, we're not gonna bring it back down. We're gonna leave it where it is and we're just, we're just not gonna raise it by drastic amounts to the point where we, we get ourselves in trouble trying to do that because that doesn't work in our experience. So anyway, that's enough of that. I <coughs> uh, hope you get them cameras in this week after the phone call. Yeah, I somehow doubt that's going to happen, but we will see. That test you have there, do you have to get it calibrated yearly or what happens there? We don't get it calibrated yearly. Phil actually sent it in this year. Uh, we've had it for three or four years and never had anything done with it. It's not supposed to need to be calibrated ever, uh, but we did send it in to have it just checked out and worked on. I don't know what all they did to it, but um, yeah, it works. And uh, it's, it's, I mean, it's basically what the elevators are using, just a farmer version of it, not quite as sophisticated as theirs. So yeah, it works really good. What are the cameras used for? We run a 2188 case. So John Deere has what they call combine auto automation or combine advisor automation something. I don't know. Um, but they're, they put a camera in the clean grain and the tailings elevators that will actually analyze the grain sample and the tailings to determine how good of a job that the combine is doing and uh, will make adjustments based on that automatically. So if it sees broken grain uh, and finds in the grain sample, it will adjust the combine settings in order to clean that up. If there's a bunch of cob or broken straw or that kind of stuff in there, it will adjust the combine to clean that up. If the tailing system has, you know, whatever the problems are in the tailings, it'll, it'll automatically adjust that. It also uses the grain loss monitor to uh, monitor what's going out the back and uh, automatically sets and adjusts the combine for you on the fly as you're going through the field. That's a really cool thing. Now, I am perfectly capable of setting a combine, right? I can do it all by myself. I'm actually halfway decent at it. Um, 
but I kind of equate this to, um, like, when when the planters started using uh, airbags for downforce. Remember this, right? It's been a number of years ago because everybody's gone to hydraulic now. But before hydraulic, they went to air, and before air, there were springs. So when you went to air uh, downforce, the first iteration of that was just airbags that you could control manually from the cab. Our first planter had a little compressor with a switch you flipped on and off right in the cab there and you could adjust the amount of air pressure in those down pressure bags on the planter for the downforce. Well then it became a set point on a display. You could punch in a number and it would automatically adjust to that number. Well then now or you know the next evolution in that was uh, uh, active pneumatic downforce or airbags that would read the ground conditions through the field and automatically adjust, right? I've run both style planners. In fact, we have both style planners right now. Um, can I set the planner down pressure to be where it should be? Yes. Does the planner down pressure change needs change throughout the field? Yes. Do I change it throughout the field every single pass back and forth? No, I do not. Can I? Yes, but I don't. It's the same thing with the combine. Can I set a combine? Yeah, absolutely. I can do it and I can make it do a really good job. Does the settings for the combine need to change going through the field? Well, if you want it to do a perfect job, yeah. It doesn't have to. You, can you do fine without doing that? Yeah, yeah, you can. But would I do a better job if I adjusted it constantly as we're going through the field and conditions change, the yield change, the, the size of the kernels change, all that stuff? Can you adjust the combine fast enough to do that? I could, I don't. Having those cameras would allow the combine to do that. Just like going to active pneumatic where it's automatically adjusting through the field and reading those conditions and adjusting the planner perfectly for where it's at in the field, the automation cameras on the combine will do the same thing. They'll automatically see what's changing and adjust the combine for the best settings as you go through the field. And um, it's, it's one of those things that I can do it, I don't, and I wouldn't, and I don't. So that's why I want them. Make sense? That makes sense. Uh, how's the test weight on the irrigated corn not on this dry year right um, well it's a little bit wet right so we're anywhere between 21 and 24 percent coming out of the field but the test weights and we've had two different hybrids um, the 112 day was anywhere from 53 6 at 23 6 moisture up to 54 7 it looks like at 21.9, and then when we switched in and got into the 110 day corn, all of a sudden it jumped. We went up to 55.1, there's a 56.1. So, and that's at 20 to 21% moisture. Test weights are really good. Uh, those numbers will get quite a bit higher coming out of the dryer. In fact, it's uh, 56 and a half, 56.5 on that sample that we just did uh, out of the dryer, Cal. So, um, typically, Wet corn has lower test weight than dry corn, so when you dry it down, it, it gains some test weight. And I've seen it gain two pounds of test weight before with our dryer, so uh, yeah, I'm really happy with that. Has all the chicken litter been spread? Yes, the chicken litter was spread a couple of days ago. That's what Dad's been working so hard on the tillage right now. We're trying to get that stuff worked in. He's If he's not done, he's almost done. I think he's only got 10 or 15 more acres to finish up everything that the chicken litter was spread on, and then he's got another 60-acre field that can be chiseled. Uh, it's bean stubble that we had um, commercial fertilizer spread on and then we're all kind of caught up on the heavy tillage i've got a couple more fields that can be spread need to be spread uh, hopefully on monday or tuesday and then those can be chiseled and we've got some corn stalks that can be disc down now but dad's he's right there on the tillage he's done a great job with that good evening alex thanks for joining us it's almost midnight here uh, hopefully I helped your farm focus. Just bought a sweatshirt. Hey, thanks, Tate. Awesome. Appreciate it. Uh, thanks for doing your part to feed America. God bless our farmers and their families. Thank you, Doug. If you're looking for a truck, Taylor and Martin has an auction near me, Pittsburgh, PA, on December 9th. Probably be 200 late model lease return trucks for sale. Always a lot of day cabs and Volvos. Good to know. That would be an option. We've, we've kind of branched out our search, and uh, Pittsburgh is within the radius, so... New planner, your next purchase? Probably not. Probably not. 
I couldn't get one for next year, I don't think, if I wanted to. Um, of course, I said that about other stuff, and it turns out we could. So, I don't know. But <clears throat> Having trouble with our 780 Cobb in the tank. Any settings, suggestions, uh, concave suggestions? Well, what are your settings now? Uh, Cobb in the tank. Broken pieces? Probably open your concave or close your or uh, slow your rotor speed down so you're not breaking them up quite so much. As long as you don't have kernels coming out the back on the cob or uh, rotor loss, you can you can do both of those things. Slow the rotor down, open the concave setting up. That should keep the cob from breaking up quite so much. Uh, and then from there, it's a matter of adjusting your sieve and chaffer and fan speed to try and keep them out of the green tank. So. Certain hybrids are going to be worse than others. That's what I have found. If you have a soft cob hybrid that breaks apart, you're going to have trouble with cob in the tank. I had one of those that we've run this year. The stuff that we're running now is really good uh, in keeping cob out. Of, uh, my sample is excellent right now. Rain's coming. Is that the storm that's going to get here Monday, I think, Alex? Doug, thank you for that super chat. How many more acres would your farm need to acquire before you would need to expand your grain storage? Um, well, that's a tough question, right? So we have a lot of grain storage right now. We cannot store everything that we grow, but we also need to move stuff in the fall for cash flow purposes. So would... Um, the question with grain storage is, do you pick up enough in either basis or futures markets by selling it in March or May or August to justify building the grain storage? And typically, yes, but if you have to borrow money to, to pay your bills in the fall, because 75% of our expenses are in the fall, right? Our seed bill, our fertilizer bill, most of our rent, all of the big expenses happen between October and December, or September 15th and December. And so we sell enough grain in the fall to, to make those things cash flow. Um, so in order to store everything, we would need, we would need another big bin. Um, but that's not, that's not really our goal right now. That's not what we're trying to do. So uh, that's a hard one to answer. I don't know how many more acres it would take. When we, when we built the big bin that we have now, the 120,000 bushel bin, we were actually farming about 400 acres more than we are right now. We lost a, a farm here a few years ago, and so uh, we've got room to expand without really expanding the grain storage. Now, I would like to, down to Berkey, uh, think about taking some of the old small bins out, putting one bigger one up in that place, uh, just make things easier and more efficient, but we farm 600 acres there. How much money are we going to spend on grain storage stuff? I, I don't know. When my water's gone, we have to quit. All right. Next purchase, that 10-foot drone sprayer. There you go. I would seriously, seriously consider a drone sprayer if I knew the licensing requirements and thought that I could do it. Like, I don't even need to be hired out to do it for anybody else. I just want to do it on my own stuff. How much licensing and um, stuff do I have to have to do that? I don't know. Been running 28 to 30. Haven't tried to go higher, but I will try. Thank you very much. I'm running 32 on my concave, so... Uh, I think I think the recommendation goes from 20 to 35. So I feel like we have pretty big cobs this year, and so I've been running a little bit more open. But I would start there and uh, just watch your, your separator loss. If that starts going up, it means that you're not getting the kernels broken off the cobs and there are still kernels coming out clear in the back, and that's when you got to start closing stuff down. But uh, if you have broken corn in that sample, you're definitely running it too fast and too tight. That's... That would be my recommendation. Open it up a little bit, slow your rotor speed down. Should keep those cobs in bigger chunks and make them easier to uh, get out of the combine. Use the big generator for quick charging the batteries. Yeah, yeah. You think they got superchargers for drone batteries? <laughs> you ever tried growing black beans? We have not. <clears throat> no market around here for black beans. Uh, do you get long-term leases on the rental ground or are they year-to-year? -year? Who pays for improvements like tile and rented ground? Yeah, uh, it kind of varies. Depends on the landlord a little bit. Some of them are long-term leases. We have some five years. We have some three years. Uh, we have some other people that are like, we don't want to sign a lease. Just farm it. Okay, we'll do what we got to do here, right? Um, but we have a farm that we've been renting since 1943. We're going on 80 years. We've been farming it and renting it from the same family. So 
Um, we, we've done well with our landlords and we treat them right. They treat us right. Everybody gets along really well. Um, what else did you ask me in there? Oh, land improvements like tile. Um, it is rare that we pay for tile on rented ground unless it's something that desperately needs done and we're confident we're going to have it for a while. We have done it. We try not to. We, if we're going to spend money on tile, it's going to be on the stuff that we own. And it's really expensive. So uh, sometimes we'll work with the landlord if uh, they're willing to spend some money putting tile in. Maybe we'll split it or do something as long as we've got a lease in place to uh, make sure that we aren't going to lose it the next year kind of thing. So our inputs is high. This year as high as last year, probably a little higher. Uh, it depends on the input. So corn or uh, seed is higher, much higher uh, this year than last year. Seed Seed's the one that took a big jump. The fertilizer, the fall broadcast is up a little bit from last year. The chicken litter is up a little bit from what it was last year. But the nitrogen that we bought for our wheat is actually down some from last year. So uh a little bit of a mixed bag we'll see where chemicals come in that's something we usually buy in january so we've got some time there we haven't gotten any prices on any of that stuff yet um it just kind of it kind of varies and depends a little bit but i would assume things are going to continue to go up because of inflation and uh supply and demand situation and stuff so uh, equipment costs are certainly up they are through the roof if you want to buy anything new which is yeah it's getting hard so there's a drone sprayer on Facebook Markets place for sale I see the other day. Yeah, uh, it's got to be the right one, right? So there's there's a new one, or I don't know how new it is, but this uh, Agris T30, I think it is. It's got like an eight-gallon tank, and it's huge, and it's way above the 55-pound weight limit. I don't know how they're getting away with that, but that one actually has some promise because you can do something with it and actually cover some ground. Uh, what starter blend do you use? Yeah, that's a loaded question because I had three different starter blends that I used this past year and I'm still working on figuring out which one I like the best. But um, mostly what I'm doing is 1034-0 and uh, ATS, ammonium thiol sulfate. I'm throwing some boron in and I'm throwing some zinc in. Um, I'm pull thinking about pulling the boron out and putting it in a different way through a spray foliar program. And... Uh, uh, I experimented with some Black Label Zinc, a, a nutrient product this year that actually I kind of like it, um, but we'll see. So, yeah, we're we're trying different stuff, um, but that that phosphorus and the sulfur is the big components, and I, I'm putting the sulfur on that way because I can't get it on with my nitrogen because I'm using anhydrous, so I have no way of putting ATS on side dress. Uh, thanks for explaining that. Don't have any experience with grain storage, so just wondering how that will process work. Yeah, it's it's really a lot of um, you know just planning and cash flow is the biggest thing that we don't have a need for more grain storage right now. So, uh, what would a shorter maturity corn, such as ninety seven hundred day down that way? Um, there's some guys that plant some of that stuff. I've never had great luck when we go that early. Even my 102 and three day stuff that we've already ran seems to be off a little bit in yield compared to the fuller season stuff. Now we'll see when we get into more of this, but I feel like we give up some yield when we get under 105. And uh, we still plant some of that, trying to get some dry corn, some earlier corn, but um, I, I don't know. I. It tends to be the guys that don't have dryers, on-farm dryers, will go with the, the 98 to 104 day stuff. And anybody that can dry corn themselves and not pay ridiculous drying charges, I shouldn't say ridiculous, but they're twice what I can dry corn for, right? Um, they usually play 105 to 110. Some guys will go a little longer, like we're doing 112 today. So, yeah. Any more dryer excitement? Nope, no more dryer excitement, not yet. It all seems to be running fine and not catching on fire, and that's always the goal. Good day from Australia. We're around four to six weeks away from harvest. 20,000 acres of wheat, 10,000 acres of canola. That's got to take a while, doesn't it? That's crazy. Cool. I hope it goes well for you. It's been wet in Australia, I hear. It's raining in the desert. Hoodie, hat, two shirts. Fund that 529. Thank you, Andrew. Appreciate it. Uh, finally got a live chat. 
Lyman Flint, did you get the computer fixed? Uh, I have not gotten the computer fixed because I have not had time. I think I've gotten it figured out thanks to some of your guys' comments. Uh, and I posted on Facebook that I was looking for a computer repair shop that wasn't run by a squad of geeks. And, um, well, I got a couple people that reached out. And I, 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 I think I have isolated the problem to the actual graphics card and not the power supply. I knew it was one of the two. Um, but one of them, somebody commented that if I just take the power supply or the, the graphics card out, that there's another HDMI port on the motherboard that would work and make it work temporarily. Um, so I've gotten it to that point. I have not had time to do anything with it, but um, that leads me to believe that I just need to buy a new graphics card. And when you search for graphics cards on Google, you will quickly realize that some of them are outrageously priced, like $1,500 for a graphics card. Are you kidding me? That's outrageous. So I gotta figure out what exactly I want. I do have a fairly high-end computer, albeit four or five years old at this point. Um, it's uh, it was a high-spec computer at the time, and I I had the intent of doing 4K video editing and stuff with it, so it's capable of that. I don't even have a 4K monitor, so do I really need to buy a fancy 4K graphics card to do that kind of stuff when I've not utilized it yet? I don't know. I don't know, but. I'll get something, come in and fix it. Better to just fix it yourself than take it somewhere else. It's, oh, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. It was one of those things that I didn't really know what I was doing and I don't have that expertise and I didn't have the time. But when I take it to somebody and they can't fix it and they send it back to me doing exactly what it was doing before, it really, really frustrates you. You're just like, why do I even try? Why do I even try? Uh, I love to see your dad in the videos with you. I like some of the past videos with him. Yeah. If we get to working together a little bit more, I'll try and get him in some more videos. But we've kind of—he's been doing his thing, and I've been doing mine lately. We haven't, haven't crossed paths a whole lot. Very wet, Nathan. Touchwood, our property is good so far. Looks like the wheat will make prime A1 prime. Cool, good for you. Uh, is the grain cart sink worth the money? Grain cart sink. I assume you mean my scale system uh you harvest is not worth the money don't buy it it's crap uh, i've heard great things about agrimatics libra system and uh i would i want to put that on our scale but i tried bringing that subject up this summer and kind of got shut down like well, what if that one doesn't work either well okay fine but what we have doesn't work so like yeah let's let's make a switch to something better because you harvest is garbage uh, have you done any flag tests on tracks versus tires, or is there a big difference that you've seen yield? I have not done that yet. That is something that I intend to do, where we harvest one row at a time like we did last year, and just see what kind of difference there is this year, um, just to see, because we ran those tracks. So I think it'll make a big difference. I think it is making a difference, but until you do that and kind of quantify it, it's hard to say exactly how much. Long live the 1080p. That's right. 1080p is just fine with me. Uh, thanks for all the work that you put into your videos and finding them one of the top YouTubers. Thank you. Appreciate it. My channel's really taken off here the last few weeks, and I know I put out a lot of content, but you guys are watching it, and I appreciate that. So, um... <coughs> oh! Midnight. Our daily report's printing. Let's see what our dryer ran today. So we got this printer hooked up to the dryer master at midnight every day time is it oh nine okay at nine minutes after midnight every day it prints a report for the day eleven thousand and six bushels wow that's crazy because yesterday we did eleven thousand and thirteen bushels <laughs> uh ran for 14 hours and 50 minutes uh inlet temperature 111.6 degrees 53% of the time it was within a half a percent of the target. 98% of the time it was within 1% of the target. That's pretty good. Uh, outlet moisture average 14.7. Moisture removal 7.9 percent points. Uh, discharge rate 7.42. Time in auto 99%. There you go. That's what we know. So like yesterday it was within 1% of target 100% of the time. And we removed on average 7.1. So kind of just tells us a little snapshot of how our dryer's doing. All right. 
turning back around. Anyway, um, what I was saying, my channel has it's done really well the last few weeks. We've gotten a lot of views. It used to be 10,000 was a really good video. Now it's 10,000 on every video, and I appreciate that. So thank you guys for watching and sticking with me. And uh, I, uh, like I said, I really appreciate it. Um, how about Sparty? Finally got one today. Got one. Overtime victory. I didn't get to watch all of it because we were moving trucks during the game and stuff, but I did catch a little bit and I caught overtime and I thought they were going to give it away there at the end with the um, uh, end of the regulation fiasco, but hey, got a W. <coughs> Can either of the boys fly the drone yet? Have they wanted to try? No, they haven't gotten interested in that just yet, so I need to get a little bit better drone. Mine's, mine's it's getting to be in rough shape, so anyway. Uh, would you upgrade the sprayer next? If so, front, boom, or rear? Tillage tractor, upgrade the tracks. Uh, sprayer is, is rising to the top of the list. Um, mostly because of this fungicide on corn thing, right? So if we're going to have to spray a bunch of fungicide on corn, I need a haggy. I need something that I can get in the corn and do that front boom. So <coughs> that is on the list. Um, obviously, semi-truck tractor is top of that list. We've also kicked around the idea of some uh, spreader for... Uh, dry broadcast fertilizer for doing that uh, something I would sort of like to start doing ourselves but it's a timing issue we don't have time to do all of that ourselves so I don't know we'll see those card prices are for multi-millionaire teenage gamers all they do is feed the world just saying yeah well you know I could probably afford like a $200 graphics card if I wanted to yeah, I know most of them are for games and stuff, but like the, the graphics card that I have on this computer, it's liquid cooled. It's got a little radiator on a fan, like liquid cooled, like a antifreeze in it. It's crazy. It's crazy. <coughs> uh, does your dad have any projects planned for the winter? Really like the board bending video. Yeah, uh, I don't know what he's got planned for this winter. He's been working in his barn a little bit. He's talked about raising the mow up so he's got more headroom. Um, what else was he doing? I don't know that he's got any major projects in his house this year like he did last year. I'm hoping maybe he'll help me on my basement or my some of my stuff a little bit. But, um, yeah, we'll see. I don't know. Every morning I watch them. Thank you, Chris. Graphic cards were used for Bitcoin mining and caused prices to triple. That's over now and the prices are falling. But I only knew, though, those used ones are probably burnt out miners. Got it. Thank you. Good morning, get her done. Good morning. Yeah, it is. I gotta go home soon. We gotta, we gotta shut this dryer off so I can go home. Is machine sink worth the money? Well, that depends, right? So for us, it was pretty cheap. I think it was like a thousand or fifteen hundred dollar activation on the combine was all I needed in order to make the machine sink work. Everything was already there on the track because we didn't have to buy any radios or anything like that. So if you're running all stuff with Gen fours, uh, with uh, the MGTs and everything already built in where you don't have to buy any hardware and it's 1500 bucks. Yeah, it's worth it. I think it's worth it. It was really nice. It's awesome. Um, but if you had to spend 10 grand to buy the machine communication radios and all the other stuff for the older series tractors, ah, uh, probably not. I wouldn't do that. Here's to the Haggy dude upgrading so you can buy his hand me down. Yeah, maybe. Thank you, Nathan Motorview Farms and family and Brock. Thank you. Appreciate you watching. Been here since the beginning. Your videos get better with every one you do. Thanks. That That's awesome. I appreciate it. What about a sprayer like Brian? Yeah, uh, an Oxbow. Uh, that would be a possibility. I just, I, I don't, they're not very common. I don't know anything about them. Good night. Look for fanless cards with big heat sinks. Liquid cooling is huge overkill. I kind of thought it was overkill too. What do I know? Haggy or Oxbow front boom. I, I would lean heavily towards a Haggy. Uh, again, it's a dealer support thing. Um, that said, there's there's millers that are also front boom that would probably work or whatever. So, uh, thoughts on your 8RX? The tracks worth the extra money. I love that tractor. It's awesome and it floats really well. If I, when I get to my compaction study again this year, we'll know a little bit more on how much that paid, right, and how much it helped us this year. But yes, I believe it is worth the money. I um, I kind of wish we would have gone with wider tracks. The issue is side dressing, right? So <clears throat> I need the 18-inch tracks to get down my 30-inch corn rows for side dressing nitrogen. 
but 24 inch tracks would be better for literally everything else that tractor does it would be better for planting it would be better for the grain cart it would be better for any tillage that we're doing it would be better going down the road it would just it would be totally better on 24 inch tracks um so if we were to upgrade another tractor or do something with another tractor whether that's an 8rx or an 8rt i would look for 24 inch tracks because we can plant beans with 24 inch tracks we can put it on the grain cart with 24 inch tracks. we can do everything except for side dressing corn and we've got the 8r 8r on tires that we could use for side dressing corn if we had to so yeah Love the videos, takes me back to living on the farm. Good, glad you enjoy them. How's your wood floors doing in your new house? I mean, they're awesome. They're wood floors that we put in and built and there's nothing wrong with them. They're holding up really, really well. Haven't, no scratches, no damage, no nothing. That's good. Uh, do you run all John Deere guidance and record keeping? Yes and yes. We run all Deere guidance and I use my John Deere Op Center for all my record keeping and stuff, so. All right, guys, we're gonna do one more quick. Actually, no, we're gonna go shut it down. 12, 16, I want to go home and go to bed. So, shut down procedures. Come out here and hit the fuel control. Hopefully our top light's out. Turn light out. No, we still got a lot of wet corn. Okay. That orange light is still on. That means there's corn all the way up there yet. <laughs> I should let it run all night, but we don't trust it that much yet. We have before, but after our fire this year, it just makes us nervous. So we hit the fuel, that kills the unload, turns the burner off. We let the fans run until the temperature drops. If it's up to 200 degrees, we'll let it drop down to under 100 and then we can shut the fans off. <laughs> the leg clears out. We are filling our big bin clear to the north, so we've got the drag conveyor up on top, dragging corn out there. All that stuff's gotta get shut down. And we'll shut our dryer down, shut our lights off, and then we'll be done here. So, all right. Anyway, well, yeah, it's gonna yell at us because discharge moisture is low, rate is low, all this other stuff. Yeah. <coughs> all right. Thanks for watching, everybody. Have a great night. I appreciate y'all tuning in. Uh, thumbs up the video if you're not subscribed to the channel. Subscribe. Tomorrow's a good one, man. Irrigated cornfield tomorrow, 8 a.m. should drop. Although I. I I do have it edited, but I've got to get it uploaded tonight. So hopefully we have good enough internet to get it uploaded in time. But it'll be there. We're running more irrigated corn tomorrow. That's what you're going to see for the next three days on the channel. Uh, go watch them because they're good videos. So, <sighs> Good night, everybody. Thank you.